Kenley Station is the only one on the Caterham branch which I have not used, as well as being the only one on this branch that's in London. And this is where I'm beginning my walk today. Just up the railway line from Kenley Station, you have a foot crossing, which are not too common in London, but there is a fair few. Foot crossings include ones on freight only lines, like at Angostine Wharf or at Brentford Docks, but there are some which are on passenger lines, such as out east near Cranham, uh, on the Emerson Park overground line, there's three, but when I've been there before to go and have a look at them, it seems that they are now closed. Uh, there's a strange one near to Bush Hill Park. Uh, there's one near Cruise Hill as well. So there are quite a few. <laughs> Apart from the diversion to go and see the foot crossing, I have been on one road so far since Kenley Station. I'm turning right now, heading this way, up Hawkehurst Road. And Hawkehurst Road has turned into a footpath that accesses Kenley Common. It's interesting it says Kenley Station is one mile back that way because I've only walked 0.7 miles so far and that includes a diversion to the foot crossing. Welcome to Kenley Common and RAF Kenley. This area is managed by the City of London Corporation, which, again, like the foot crossings, own a fair few places, such as Hampstead Heath, Highgate Woods, West Ham Park, Queen's Park, but places outside of London too, strangely, like Epping Forest and Burnham Beaches even. And we've made it out to where the old RAF Kenley base used to be and I feel like the information board here is even depicting a plane's wing which is a nice touch. You know it's very strange to just see a plane coming into land or taking off here and it's completely silent because being opposite London City Airport before with the roaring engines of you know proper planes it's something different. quite cool that you can come right up to come and see Kenley Airfield. I feel like people know about the six London airports of course, only two of which are in London. Even Biggin Hill Airport I think people know about but RAF Kenley here feels quite unknown. No one really knows about this but it's worth a visit. It's a site of historical importance, of course, Kenley Airfield, playing crucial roles during both of the World Wars and the Battle of Britain, so it's nice that there's this tribute here, right in front of what looks to be like an old fort area of some kind. I think it's quite fitting that there are poppies growing here as well. So we're leaving RAF Kenley briefly to head in towards Coulsdon Common, which is another City of London managed place. I'm specifically in the South London Downs National Nature Reserve area of Coulsdon Common, which is very much on the edge of London. The London Loop orbital path passes through close to here and through some of the City of London managed commons around the Coulsdon area and because of that I would say that this is one of the more beautiful sections of the London Loop although strangely it doesn't include a visit to Kenley Airfield which I feel like is a bit of a missed opportunity 
I'd recommend this section of the loop, but I would suggest maybe diverting off of it to go and have a look at Kenley Airfield because it is worth it. Making it back over into RAF Kenley now, I thought I'd just go and have a quick look at that side of the common because uh, I haven't been to it before on London Loop. And I've come across an old rifle range building which is still here. Just got a huge brick wall in the middle of the woods here. It's quite unusual to come across. And we're now back beside Kenley Airfield again. Now on the other side of it, walking up all the way around. I've noticed these on our walk so far and I'm wondering if maybe these are the site of old hangars that were dotted around the airfield. There's some great history information boards as well dotted around the airfield here. This one is about the rifle range. Wish I saw where someone had uh, scratched the date from 1928 into it though. Well that brings my little circular walk around Kenley Airfield to an end. Doesn't mean we're at the end of the walk though. <laughs> Got a lot left yet. Oh, this is a great view ahead. Heading down in towards the valley now. There's an old quarry over there as well, which is quite interesting. And this sign up here for Kenley in Croydon must mean that we've hit the very border of London. Made it into a bit of a built up urban area now that we've left London and a station called Whiteleaf where they've spelt both white and leaf incorrectly. The stations on this Caterham branch line opened in 1856 but this one opened later than the others in 1900 and I have used this to connect with another station nearby. The other two on this line, Whiteleaf South and Caterham, I both used when I was traveling all of London's bus routes because the 434 terminates at Whiteleaf South and the 407 begins at Caterham. However, nowadays the 434 also goes Caterham and a new route, the 439, instead terminates at Whiteleaf South. And only a couple of minutes up the road from Whiteleaf Station, you have Upper Warlingham Station. This station opened in 1884 and where on the Caterham branch that was always the terminus, on this branch there's actually two, East Grinstead and Uckfield, although services from here are predominantly heading for East Grinstead. But both of those locations are the end of the line nowadays but wasn't always, they used to continue and connect up with other railways at Lewis. It's quite strange that this area has two different stations but it's kind of a classic case of competing railway companies back in the day both wanting a line and a station in this area and now we're left in this kind of weird predicament where both stations are owned by the same company and they're just very close by to each other and there's no like proper connection they're not integrated. There's an out station interchange but yeah, having two stations like this very close by, it's quite odd, but not unusual. There's quite a few examples of this across the country. It's got a nice little passenger lounge area as well, Upper Warningham Station. It's nice. Carrying on with the walk, I'm now in Whiteleaf Park, but if you didn't want to do a walk as long as the ones that I do, you can always end at either Whiteleaf or Up Warlingham Station. When I made it to Whiteleaf, it was about four and a half miles that I had done since leaving Kenley. You could shorten that walk even further if you just stuck to the airfield and didn't go to uh, Causden Common. Wow, this is a very steep path to be taking though to leave Whiteleaf Park, especially in the hot sun. You get some fantastic views though once you make it to the top, so it is worth the climb. Made it into another built up area now. This is actual Warlingham, and this is its village green. I would have thought that maybe there would have been a village sign around here, but there isn't. Doing a quick loop 
around Warlingham. Come to check out Blanchman's Farm Nature Reserve here. I appreciate that it has a proper solid pathway through it. And I'm now in Hamsey Green playing fields. I've always known Hamsey Green as being the next village up from Warlingham and also the place where a London Loop section ends and begins. I remember on that London Loop path to Hamsey Green at the end of the walk, it was a path similar to this and a horse poked its head out <laughs> over the fence, which quite surprised me. So we might not have had a village sign at Warlingham, but we have had a village sign here at Farley. It's not much of a village though. This might be one of the most isolated village signs I've ever come across. It's a very rural stretch of the walk now. A mix of woodland and fields. It's a beautiful evening to be walking across a landscape like this. I don't know what's in there. It seems like there's some sort of old fort or something. It's a circular structure just hidden in the trees. I've clambered my way over because of course I wanted to come and have a look. Yeah, it's just like an old rotunda of sorts, isn't it? Well, this is an unexpected little discovery, I guess. Didn't know this was here. So I've gotten a little bit lost here. There was a junction of three paths that I could have taken and the one I wanted didn't actually exist. I somehow ended up on one of the other two. But I'm now on what I thought was the third one and I thought it was going to lead up to a road but actually it's a path underneath that road instead. I do know that it's leading into a private development but somewhere in that development is something I wanted to go and see. However, I can actually see it from this path. It's an old clock slash water tower. I didn't know if I'd be able to get into that development to go and have a look at it, but considering I struggled to find my pathway and yeah, it doesn't look like it's that accessible. I'm glad I can still see it from here instead. That will do for me. private estate, no public access. So yeah, I guess I technically wouldn't be allowed to go in even though there's nothing really stopping me. Good thing I was on the uh, Vanguard Way footpath instead. That's a long distance path which runs between Croydon and New Haven, I believe, down at the sea. Ah, there's a coal tax post here. These are quite a rarity to come across, but then again, saying that, I did see one uh, right by Whiteleaf Station earlier. Welcome to Chelsham, or is it Chelsham? If it's Chesham, then surely it's Chelsham. Has an identical village sign to Farley though. And again, quite in a rural area. Queen's Park. I mentioned that earlier as one of the City of London managed parks. I didn't think I'd see it written on the front of an old London bus that's just kind of been left abandoned here with the front windscreen even cracked. This is very strange. The emergency exit door was open so I thought I'd just climb aboard and have a quick look. If you ever wanted to see a bus in its empty form, here it is. This is very bizarre and it's tilted so it's, <laughs> it's quite weird to walk along. I've tested the bell. It no longer works. I remember travelling on these buses. Plaxton Presidents, they're called. They have the uh, classic driver look up to the mirror to then see how busy it is upstairs, kind of before CCTV cameras were introduced. Got a couple of seats left downstairs. 
I remember this uh, tape that was kind of attached to the back doors that would swing open. Well, that won't be very comfortable to sit on. That would. All right, <laughs> tell me, go. Ah, oh, it's blinded to be a 260 bus. I actually took this type of bus when I did the 260 route from White City to Golders Green. It's a strange discovery to come across here. Very unexpected. Well, there's the village sign for Warlingham. Might be hard to make out because of the sun casting a silhouette. It's acting more of a welcome sign rather than, you know, placed right in the middle of the village green. And we're seeing this right at the end of our walk today. And here's the bus I'll be catching home, the 403 full route from Warlingham to West Croydon. At least this bus isn't abandoned, tilting over in the middle of some bushes. Well, that was a brilliant walk, a great way to spend the summer solstice. Thank you for coming along with me. Feel free to join me another time for another adventure.